thanks to everybody for coming out tonight to what is sure to be an exciting meetup. Uh, this is our Southwest Florida SEC monthly meetup. We meet the third Tuesday of every month at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And we're open to the public. Uh, anybody's free to join us. We are all virtual right now with the hopes of getting back to official physical meetings sometime soon. We don't know when yet, but we'll make that announcement when it happens. And we'll be maintaining a virtual uh, meetup so that we can keep people coming in from all over. Uh, we've definitely noticed the benefit from being on virtual and, and having people come in beyond our little region down here in Southwest Florida. So we want to keep that going even when we meet physical. With that said, we do have a large uh, tech group environment down here, if you will. Uh, and you can see here some of those logos for the different groups. And we have Southwest Florida coders. I saw Zarello is on. So Zarello, if you could give a, a quick blurb about Southwest coders. Sure. Sorry, I don't have my camera on. I have a baby next uh, next to me. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm the organizer of Southwest Florida Coders, and we are a group uh, that does everything coding. Uh, we focus on a bunch of different technologies. So we done from React, C Sharp, machine learning, really any kind of topics. And we welcome anybody that is a developer, or even if you are just interested on learning how to code. Um, I'll chat my, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the link on the chat, but yeah, uh, we're next, we're on Meetup as well. So you can just look for Southwest Florida Coder. And our next Meetup, we're actually going to co-host here with Mike and this group. So we're excited about that. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. All right, then we have Southwest Florida Data. I didn't see Daniel join us, um, but if you're interested in data, all things data, machine learning, AI, data privacy, data security, uh, this group covers it all, and they do have a meetup coming up. We'll go through the upcoming events here shortly. Of course, there's our group's logo. Uh, we also have Pie Ladies of Southwest Florida. I did not see anybody from there. Zarella, I don't know. Can you give a quick blurb about Pie Ladies? Yes, they also meet monthly, uh, just like us. They've been also meeting uh, every uh, virtually which is also cool, as you mentioned, it's very cool because we can have like speakers from other, from other states. Um, but yeah, they are also on Meetup and I also dropped their link on the chat. They, they, are, they have very cool talks. They've done like GitHub, PyLabs, really also machine learning. So, so you guys should definitely join. Thank Great, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, they have been good meetups. I think the last couple were on Jupyter Notebooks or Jupyter Lab. So. Uh, definitely something for everyone. Uh, then we have OWASP Bonita Springs, which is another group that we run here in the region. We meet the first Tuesday of every quarter. So we just had our, our most recent meetup back on April 6th, I believe, and the next one will be July 6th. Then we have VR and AR of Southwest Florida. Uh, didn't see anybody from that meetup here on the channel. Um, that one, again, they meet up uh, probably pretty regularly so far, I think at least once a month. And they do have meetups coming up and we'll get into that in the next slide. Uh, WordPress meetup with Southwest Florida uh, as well has been pretty active recently with uh, large meetups happening. And Southwest Florida Regional Technology Partnership. Uh, I'm gonna again ask Zarella if you wanna give a quick uh, shout out for Southwest Florida Regional Technology Partnership. Sure, and thank you. By the way, as you guys can tell, we're all kind of like sister groups. We are very close friends, each organizer of each group. But yeah, the uh, technology partnership is a huge um, group of like uh, people networking and everything. You have their sponsors are like the biggest organizations in the area, like Hertz, uh, Chico's, Artrex, I believe too. Um, just all the largest one and they actually have, a, have an event coming up uh, this Thursday in person and I believe it's going to be about blockchain. Uh, I'll, I'll find the link for you guys too. Great, thank you. Yeah, I, I try to describe Southwest Florida Regional Technology Partnership and I usually butcher it. So thanks for doing that. Um, much better job than me. Oh, of course, anytime. I, and, and of course we have a, a growing um, environment down here of technology groups. So this isn't all, everybody. This is just the logos I have right now. I do know that we have a, a hacker space that I don't know how active they are, but uh, I do see meetups pop up once in a while for them uh, as well as a Bitcoin group too. 
a open source group that hasn't gone off the ground yet, but it's it's out there on Meetup so far, uh, and a couple others. So we do continue to grow the uh, region and, and tech, and that's a good thing for Southwest Florida. So uh, before we get into upcoming events, or maybe this is part of the upcoming events, uh, Shane, do you want to give a, a quick uh, shout out for the second annual Iowa Fest? Sure. So the ILF Fest is coming up on July the 10th, and uh, it is going to be a lot of fun. We currently have um, Chris Hadnagy is scheduled to go, the human hacker. He's going to be presenting. Uh, Dave Kennedy is promised to present. So has, um, oh my goodness, AJ plays, oh man. Seriously, this is getting recorded. Who, what? AJ Cook from Criminal Minds is going to be showing up. If you guys know her, she plays JJ on Criminal Minds. And also Neil Fallon from Clutch is going to be there. And so we're also looking for other people to participate. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Last year, we raised $33,000 for the ILF. We're hoping to shoot for a minimum of 50K. We'll see how that goes. And we are going to have some fun. And uh, potentially, there's someone on this list here who may end up getting a tattoo out of it, but we'll maybe discuss that later. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Shane. I, I went to last year's as well as a couple other people on here from Southwest Florida Stack, and I know uh, myself, I personally enjoyed it quite a bit. I plan to attend uh, this one as well. All right. Upcoming events, as you just heard, ILFS 2021, July 10th, uh, Southwest Florida Coders. And you heard Zarella, they're going to co-host with us for May. And our May meetup, even though I don't have it on here, I just will go ahead and say our May meetup is going to be, let me check my calendar here, third Tuesday, May 18th. And we are doing a uh, mental health awareness month uh, meetup. It's going to be a panel uh, with our one of our friends it's from ILFS. Let's see. Southwest Florida Coders, uh, ourselves, Southwest Florida Sec, and Inessa, I saw you join. So uh, Pi Ladies from Southwest Florida, we're all uh, co-hosting on, on that. And uh, we're looking forward to having the panel about mental health and mental health awareness. Uh, going down the list, we got Pi Ladies Southwest Florida uh, coming up Tuesday, April 27th. And I think they're co-hosting with Southwest Florida Data. Inessa, can you uh, give us some details on that, please? Yes, thank you, Michael. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm glad I didn't miss my spot. Um, my name is Anessa Boss, and, and uh, I'm the organizer of a Python user group and Pi Ladies chapter in Southwest Florida. Uh, currently, all our events are held virtually. Uh, our next uh, event is scheduled for the 27th of April at 7.30 p.m. and we are co-hosting with uh, Southwest Florida Data and the Pi Ladies Miami. Um, if you work with data, uh, not necessarily using Python, put this event on your calendar. We'll be talking about data quality. Um, you will greatly benefit from this event. Thank you, Michael. Back to you. Thanks, Vanessa. Yeah, I know something big, something that's big in the industry over on life sciences side with pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and whatnot is, is data quality and data integrity. I mean, it's a, uh, quite a large subject, and we see enforcement activity from the FDA and other and other global uh, regulatory bodies happening on that. So uh, it's definitely of interest. Uh, OWASP Bonita Springs is coming up on Tuesday, July 6th. We don't have a uh, subject yet, so if anybody wants to volunteer and, and give a talk for that night, feel free to reach out to me. Or otherwise, we'll just make something up. Uh, VR and AR Southwest Florida is going to be Thursday, April 23rd. So it's coming up here with a special event. Uh, Travel Deck VR World Tour and Alt Space VR. You don't need a headset, which is great about Alt Space VR. It can uh, work with 2D um, regular computers, tablets, and whatnot. So feel free to check it out. It's a free event. Uh, Sarasota InfoSec Community, you'll have to see their meetup for details. They are kind of a sister organization for us covering Southwest Florida. So we're the South Southwest Florida. Uh, region and Sarasota is covering the North Southwest Florida region. So it makes it really easy on Shane if he ever gets back out to traveling again so that he can either choose to go North or South because he's kind of the midpoint uh, between the two groups. 
Uh, Hack Miami is coming up on Saturday, May 15th. Well, next month, I make it sound like it's soon, but uh, in space, no one can hear you hack. So it should be interesting about hacking satellites and whatnot. ISSA, Southwest Florida, or South Florida, sorry, Thursday, May 20th, see their meetup page. ISACA, Southwest Florida, see their website. And then OWASP, South, South of Florida, coming up on Wednesday, April 28th. Beyond Sam, raising the AppSec bar. Uh, then a couple of B-sides coming up here shortly, B-sides Knoxville and B-sides Oklahoma. So check out their Twitter, uh, as well as uh, head to Security B-sides website for more details. All right, this is a time where I take a pause so you don't have to listen to me for at least a little while and give it over to everybody else here. Uh, tell us your needs. Are you looking for a job? Are you looking to hire somebody? Are you just have some general questions or uh, any other things? So I'm going to turn off my microphone for the moment and hand it over to the group. The, uh, the Innocent Lives Foundation is still looking for a fundraiser. We're looking for someone with a minimum of three years experience. It is a paid position. And we are uh, looking for folks who have done this for a living and raised over a million dollars per year. If anyone knows anyone out there that may be interested in this, please have them give us a shout. Great. Thanks, Shane. Anyone else? All right. Well, I'll take back the microphone just for a moment and give my own little uh, need because Michelle is not speaking up on her end. And that's that my employer and Michelle is Arthrex, the largest medical device company down here in Southwest Florida. Uh, we are looking for a variety of different talent, uh, from business analysts to infrastructure experts and coders and everything in between. So if you're interested, check out careers.rsx.com and put in the application. It's a great company to work for. We are a global company, and uh, IT is just a, a great team to, to, to work with. All right, now what everybody's here for is, of course, Cy and all Darknet all the time. So if you want to go ahead and take it over from here. I'm somehow always double muted. <laughs> it is a notorious problem of mine. I am the palest thing in the world. Holy goodness. Does that help? Yeah, it does. Uh, hi, can people hear me? Did I undouble mute myself? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, I'm me. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Hey, don't be a thief, dog. So I'm Cytus Asteridesi. Uh, if you have ever heard of me before, it's probably under the name of Levitanen or Levy. Um, I am known mostly by that for what I do in regards to Darknet. I talk about it a lot. I've presented on it a few times. I did at one point have a training up for uh, the Darknet investigations that I hope to have running again shortly. Um, and just a few caveats before we really deep dive and have some fun. I am freezing right now. So if I sound weird, I apologize. <laughs> I'm in front of the only window in this room. Uh, and I didn't realize it was cold because it's going to snow. And I hope that doesn't give anybody whiplash to like a few months ago when there was a blizzard across the States. Um, but yeah, it's cold. So I also, um, I had things to say and I forgot them. I have a giant dog here. Her name's Nymeria. Say hi. Uh, she is a very large wolf pup and she likes to be nosy and noisy. So you'll probably see her if you haven't seen her yet already. Uh, other places people may know me from is I do volunteer for the Instant Lives Foundation and will do all and everything I can to help the Instant Lives Foundation, including putting stickers on things. So please always help out the Instant Lives Foundation. And if you think anything I say tonight is really cool, please go to the, my fundraise, which I don't have the link for, so I can't help you with that. Um, I'm so bad at this. And I think Shane's like, oh, I'm going to get it now. I don't know. Or maybe Mandy can help me. So somebody <laughs> but, can grab it and, and paste it in chat. I'm so bad about this. But uh, if anything, if you think anything is cool, please go and donate there. Um, and then my final caveat before we get in, to have some fun is I don't talk most of the time. So if anybody from my job is here, they tend to, they will confirm this. I am actually more of a lurker than a talker. And thank you, Mandy, in most uh, meetings. So please forgive me. I will be drinking regularly. Usually, if I talk for any extended period of time, I don't have a voice anymore. So I apologize. I think that's it. Yeah. So here's the here's the real fun of this evening. 
Um, I prefer to do uh, interactive. Um, I miss it, mixing up words in my mouth. I prefer to have interactive uh, involvement with my presentations. So I will probably be pivoting to everybody in the audience at some point. And I'm that annoying, annoying presenter or teacher or somebody. <laughs> um, and I will wait until somebody interacts with me because it's more fun that way. So please, please interact, which this group already seems like we're gonna have a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And if you, for some reason, want to interact but don't want to be on camera or have your voice on video recorded to go on YouTube, I think at some point, just post in the chat and I'll just read it and we can interact that way. Hello. So um, there's this awesome backup background that you made, Mike, which is great. And I, I'm sorry, I'm going to get a little distracted because I am watching the chat. <laughs> um, I, so generally speaking, who am I and what am I going to talk about? So I am a darknet researcher who focuses in on machine learning and artificial intelligence. I'm basically a giant nerd. Um, if you've listened to the podcast that came out last week, I am a giant nerd. Mandy has reiterated, I am a giant nerd. Um, all I ever, I could talk about the darknet until um, the sun implodes. If you don't tell me to shut up in an hour, uh, I'll keep going, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> looking at you. You you um, can keep going. We can go all night if you want to. Like I said, all all dark night all the time. There all we go. Dark night all the time. We're it's a set. very it's an accurate quote from a ch side chat that we had. So, I um. I will get into what the dark net is. I also said that I would talk a little bit about OSINT and the different levels of the internet, and it's kind of almost like a preview of what my darknet, my level one class was. It's also kind of taken, taking out of, um, from my dark, my dark, my DEF CON talk last year. Um, so just out of curiosity, is there anybody who is here today who, and I don't know if we have a raise our hand feature, we do, um, who saw my DEF CON talk, either when it was aired live or when it was, it's, it's on YouTube, so I'm just curious if anyone has seen that. Let me know. I, I'll have to confess I have not seen it yet, but now that you've mentioned it, I'm going to go grab the link. And... I'm so insulted. Hang on, I have the link. That's the link I have. I do have that one because it is the first link on my Twitter. <laughs> um, it would be great if it opened so I could get you that link. Oh, God, I can hear my voice. I hate that. Um, Oh no. Oh, you stopped presenting. I got so confused. Oh man. Here we go. So here's the link. Now I can see more pretty beautiful faces. Why is the link not posing? I broke it. I'm usually so good with links. There we go. So um, if anybody wants to watch it at some point, that is my DEF CON talk. My DEF CON talk was about a, a project I'm working on called Ambly, which is a dark net cyber threat intelligence spider. Um, it's a smart spider. And we can definitely talk about that more at some point, but that is not the main focus of today. So I'm going to jump past that. Um, so before we really get into the meat and potatoes, can anybody tell me, either hop on off of mute or put it in the chat, um, what you expect the dark net to be? Or what you, what are, what, how do you define the dark net or how has it been defined to you? What do you think it is? I'm gonna mute myself to somebody talk. Areas that aren't uh, indexed by search engines. I'll just throw that out there. That's a good one. I think it's a horrible, mysterious place where people go to die and commit all types of heinous crimes. Is that, am I correct? No. I think that's what <laughs> I do on there. It, 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 it's the place where that light switch on the wall that you don't know actually turns things off. But it, that's the dark net. Yes. Yeah. All the web pages are in dark mode. Tim's not wrong, but also there are some sites that actually 
have really bright like white websites on tour and they bother me um that's a good question cloud storage we'll get to that in a bit uh jay's got the most so far but that's actually not so much describing it as just listing some of them off but that's fair um stop huffing in people's ears miss gosh so I like that one about the cloud storage. If I don't get back to that, please bring that up again, Josh. Um, so go away. <laughs> um, all right, so let's see if I can bring up my slides and we can go through a few things. Oh no, there's an alarm going off somewhere. There we go. Do I have the ability to share Probably my not. screen? I don't think so. I don't have the power. I do it now. You. I, think we can uh, fix that. <laughs> I got it now. Okay. Can you see? Yay! No. Your doggo is correct. <laughs> Chill out. Look at your bed. Ugh. Anyway, um, this is my thing. Uh, so we're gonna steal a few slides from my um, DevCon talk, but let me open. It. <laughs> yes, I'm a thief of my own goods. I know. Um, <laughs> I apologize if she keeps barking. I will mute for a little bit. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so oop. I'll just go through this really quick because I kind of sporadically jumped over this earlier. I um, so generally speaking, I work by day in cybersecurity. I focus in on cyber threat intelligence. Uh, hello, goodbye. Stop. <laughs> Great artist skill, correct. Um, and I Sorry, I'm watching my dog. She's very distracting. I focus. I work in cyber threat intelligence by day. I do a lot of open source intelligence. I have a lot of fun doing investigations. In my spare time, my personal background, I tend to. Um, I have been doing investigations on the dark net and deep web for about. Probably eight years I've started doing them. I've been on a dark net of some form for about 13 years. I'm not that old. <laughs> so that's effectively um, a good portion of my life. I'm not gonna tell you how much of my life because I have personal OPSEC, but <laughs> um, some a good chunk of my life I've been on the dark net. Um, I, so I do a lot of stuff on the dark net for work sometimes. I do a lot of it for personal. And I've been working on a thesis, as I mentioned earlier, which I did talk about at DEF CON last year, which is called Ambly. Uh, so I have a lot of my life is centered around the dark net, which is why this is called dark net all the time, all the time, because I will never shut up about it. <laughs> um, so, and the whole spider thing, I, there are no pictures of spiders so please do not be alarmed if you are arachnophobic. Um, the whole spider thing is because that is what I build to do some of my investigations. Um, this, so free warning, because we have Shrek here. This, from, this is from my DEF CON talk. I did have a uh, little game going on. So you'll see weird little images throughout, but it's for fun, don't worry. <laughs> um, so just to go over, this is a few things that we will chat about today, not the last one. So we can ignore this one effectively. I can't edit it because I'm showing it to you, but not gonna go over that one. I'm gonna go over some OSINT stuff, some cyber threat intelligence, the levels of the internet, and we'll get into uh, the dark net specifically and any questions you guys have. But let's talk open source intelligence. You guys are all here. I've heard, already seen some messages on the side about OSINT. Um, is there a big interest in OSINT? Does everybody know what OSINT is? People are a fan of OSINT, not a fan. Anybody think OSINT is bad? Let me know. Give me your thoughts. I'm a fan. I'm excited about it. Does anybody use OSINT for work? Love me some OSINT. Yeah, Mandy, same. I'm also liable to mute myself and then talk. So please tell me if I do. What is your decent idea? <laughs> wow. 
thefts when it's doxing, cyber stalking. I wouldn't call that OSINT. Um, you can use OSINT to get the information that you get to doxing and cyber stalking, but I would not consider that part of OSINT. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Kevin. Um, but that's good. It seems like everybody has at least some general understanding of OSINT, just at a high level. It's open source intelligence. Um, so I don't know how to pronounce his last name properly. I barely know how to pronounce my name. So I apologize if I say this wrong, but Michael, <laughs> Michael Basil, I think, I don't know, um, from his OSINT techniques book said, any intelligence produced from publicly available information that is collected, explored and disseminated in a timely manner uh, to an appropriate audience for the purpose of addressing a specific intelligence requirement is what OSINT is. Uh, Mandy has the book. I half expect her to hold it up to the camera in a second, but she's not doing it. <laughs> Mine's downstairs. So um, that's one of the best books on OSINT that everybody recommends. It's one of, uh, it's a good book that I use often. I saw some mention of Trace Labs and I'll talk about them in a little bit too. Uh, they tend to, uh, I used it when I was training to do some Trace Labs stuff last year. But overall, Yes, eighth edition is out. It came out right after I bought the seventh edition. <laughs> so I'm real happy about that. Um, which, and Mandy's dedicated, look at that. <laughs> um, but this includes being able to find information on the internet, all of the levels of the internet. Nothing says you can't go deep or dive and find stuff. Uh, mass media, television, radio, print, Specialized journals, con uh, conference materials, think tank studies, photos, videos, geospatial information, which is fun. And if you do trace labs, highly recommend you get good at finding that information because that'll get you some big points. Um, there is some interesting stuff that's listed here because when I talk to people about OSINT, most of them are internet crazy. Yep, prophecy tax is a good one. Uh, road, uh, road, <laughs> voter registration or rotor, which is my combination of those two things. Um, yes, voter registrations is a great one. You can get a lot of information from that. Um, obituaries can often help you find the addresses or names of family members. Really good things. All of some of these things are not on the internet, some of them are. Oftentimes I have found that people are very much, it is on the internet, that's it. It's not quite the case. If you saw the fireside chat from, for I, the Innocent Lives Foundation in, was it February, Mandy? Was Alex? Skip Tracer? I think it was February. Um, we had the Skip Tracer. He was very cool. And that was all about being able to find people. And it wasn't just about finding people via um, the internet. It was using other sources, some of which are open source, such as television, news. Um, this is gonna be a YouTube video. This could be used as open source if I ever go missing or if I do something and people are trying to find out stuff about me. Or if somebody's trying to dox me or cyber stalk me to <laughs> JE's point. Um, people have written books. We have Michael Brazel's book. We could use that to understand him better. That is another form of open source intelligence. So I just want to iterate here that open source intelligence should not be considered limited to um, just the internet at any level. Yeah, thank you, Mandy, because that was a really good one. Over all across the board. <clears throat> So, <laughs> so um, what's OSINT good for? It's good for everything. Personally, that's what I think. Hey, look, Mandy, you gave the wrong link <laughs> the first time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but thanks for posting my fundraiser again. Um, so this is where I start talking about Trace Labs. Um, it is still my goal to beat Heath and Joe <laughs> at OSINT CTF. So I just haven't gotten to be in another one for a little bit. Um, but you can use these, you can use OSINT skills all over the place. You can use it for investigations that have to do with law enforcement. You can use it if you work in the legal field. Um, that's true. 
you can do it if you, you mentioned Mike, for example, that you work in pharmaceuticals. I've worked in the pharmaceutical field as well. And if I want to find out about someone who is targeting a, a group um, or my industry, maybe I have tools that can help me with that. Maybe I have something like Recorded Future or a CrowdStrike or somebody who already analyzes these and can tell me that. Maybe I don't. Maybe I just have to start doing some OSINT, some open source investigation, uh, intelligence gathering or an investigation to gather that information to help me build a protection against it. Or I want to learn about my competitors. What have they published? Who may be acquiring them? What are the rumors around them? Uh, how, how is it like to work there? If Do they have a good rating on Glassdoor, I think it's called. Do, there's a website specifically for people who, uh, for layoffs, do they have a bunch of people posted there? This is, you can use OSINT anywhere. Um, and also about finding your favorite book when you were nine that you forgot existed for 10 plus years because I did and I, it took me a month but I found it using OSINT from like the very minuscule detail to remember the book. So you can do it too. <laughs> What was your favorite book? Uh, <laughs> when I was little, it was called Goddess of Yesterday. And it is about a um, just child in Greece who puts a, a live octopus on her head to make people think she's Medusa. <laughs> so just, it's a good book. I highly recommend it. It's a young adult's book. It is on Audible because I found it and I bought it. <laughs> That but. does not surprise me in the least, Sai. <laughs> nope, shouldn't. It? It's not about spiders. I love octopus, though, so it's fine. I would own one if that was legal. Also, it's rude, so I won't. But, you know. Hey, is OSINT legal? <laughs> Good segue. Thanks, Shane. Um, <laughs> so this is fun. Short answer is yes. Long answer is one of my animals is doing something bad. Um, short answer is yes. Long answer is it depends. I'm only giving you the answer for America, uh, for the CIA specifically, or at least what they reference. Um, I don't know if anybody here is from not the United States. So yours, if you are, it's going to be different for you. Do not take my word for it. Um, but as of last year, what was posted on the CIA website about what OSINT is, was, hey, New Zealand is awesome, was that the US public law open source intelligence is produced from publicly available information, collected, analyzed, and disseminated in a timely manner to an appropriate audience, and addresses a specific intelligence requirement. Um, laws based on state by state, country by country, obviously, are gonna be different. Um, but everything we just talked about going on, hey, you are losing, uh, people getting laid off and they're leaving bad reviews. You've got people on glass door saying they hate their manager. You've got the rate my manager. You have the rate my doctor. You've got all of this stuff. You have YouTube videos. You have articles, you have blog posts, you have obit obituaries. You have all of this stuff. You can use it for OSINT. And I just really want to drill that in people's minds because I swear so many people are like, I'm just going to go on Facebook and find everything. And the only time that works is if you have mom powers because I swear that somehow, some way, all moms suddenly learn how to do really, really great OSINT on Facebook. My mom joined the Chase Labs and she did excellent. And all she did was Facebook. <laughs> so just saying. Um. Oh, yes. This will be fun because this is still timely, unfortunately. Um, so this is more of where we get to the interactive part. Ooh, Brazil and New Zealand, that's fun. No worries for being late, Heather. Thanks for coming. Um, so during the pandemic, you're working from home. Everyone's working from home. Your company, which is Global, just announced it's working on, a pro on processing a pandemic data to help drive towards a cure. This might affect Mike and anybody else working in uh, pharmaceuticals more than anybody else. Um, if you're part of the, se uh, the security team and you need to know how you want to act um, against 
who may want to act against the company because of the announcement? What do you do? Anybody have any ideas based on what we've talked about so far? And please, by all means, come off mute. But again, for anybody who did come in late, this is being recorded. It is going up on YouTube. If you do not want to come off mute, that's totally fine. But if you do want to interact, please just pop it in the chat. I'm watching it. I love interaction. I'm evil and I will not move on until we have interaction. What's the question? Sure. Um, so you're, we're in a hypothetical situation and you work for a company that is in some way involved with developing a cure or a vaccine during a pandemic. And you are a part of a security team and you need to know who may act against your company because of this announcement. What do you do based on what we've talked about and in general, what would you suggest? And what we've been talking about mostly is OSINT so far. Um, I would probably start with Twitter and see who is um, clapping their gums about it. Um, I love that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I would probably start there. Maybe um, Facebook is kind of, Twitter is, is easier because you have hashtags and you can find public stuff easier. Um, Facebook, you know, you do have different groups and people posting on walls, but I, I think it's it's not as, uh, well, like OSINT and Twitter, I think it's easier. It's fast or faster rather. Than, than Facebook. Facebook might, um, it, it might take a bit more time, um, but you could also get some gold there. It totally uh, it makes a lot of sense. And I would tend to agree with you. Um, I would say that generally, I do have Facebook that I use on occasion for OSINT. Generally speaking, it's not my favorite place to be. Um, so I tend to not use it that much when I can avoid it but it definitely is, you can definitely go a lot faster on Twitter. So it's a very good point. Uh, I like JE's over here, the reports on competitors being breached. That's a big one, that's very important. Vendor publications about threats, yep. Brand monitoring is important too. Oh no, <laughs> Forrest can't unmute, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't help you, I don't Apple. <laughs> sorry um i barely windows so we're lucky it's working today um let's see that is is anybody else have anything they want to pop in on um let's see yeah either oh go on i was gonna say uh maybe check out specific apts that are known for industrial fines I like, um, I wanna kind of keep what Heather brought up. You mentioned the, I do like the weblogs thing, scraping, yep. I do Linux, <laughs> that is what I do. Um, but I like what Heather brought up about social media. What, so anybody who's in, who's listening in, what do you think is one of the most valuable, I'm not gonna say a layer of the internet yet, valuable, um, social media to use to gather information? I don't know if I'd say social media, but I mean, I think Google dorking or things like that could be very capable things to basically scrape the entire internet for specific, you know, key terms that you want to scout and things like that in terms of doing like intelligence and other entities. I agree with most of that, except for one key part, and we're going to get to that in a minute. Sure. Um, okay. <laughs> most of the so Google dorking is excellent, not a social media. I also agree with that. Excellent. It is such a valuable tool. I'm going to get on a side road about that right now. So many people don't understand how Google dorking works, and it's fantastic and it's magical. Please learn it. I will give you resources at the end of this call if you want me to. I love it. It's fantastic and it's magic. I can, I can just keep repeating those three things if I need to, to get you to understand. <laughs> um, 
Now, uh, if anybody else wants to unmute, please do. I'm seeing LinkedIn and Twitter as two of the most, and I'm kind of surprised. I will, I will share all the things. <laughs> um, I'm kind of surprised that I haven't heard the one I expected yet. So I'm going to wait, see if anybody else is any obvious idea. Facebook. <laughs> we mentioned Facebook. Facebook's not the one I was thinking of, but Facebook uh, is one too. Clubhouse. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> so get, bring that back up in a little bit. TikTok is a thing. <laughs> Instagram, also a thing. I tend to find that TikTok right now has more than Instagram, but Instagram also works. There's one more. <laughs> well, I mean, if Clubhouse is being thrown out, then I'm going to have to throw out Parlor. All the all they did, all was, they did a, was a scrape. Parlor was a fun one. <laughs> it's coming back. Uh, yeah. this week. Do you consider Reddit to be social media? There we oh, go. No. That's what I was waiting on. My newsletter of the internet, guys. <laughs> so yes, Parlor, fun. We can talk about that too. Snapchat, yes. YouTube, yes, actually. Some people don't consider that a social media. It's definitely fantastic for tracking people. I'm not going to lie. I've done OSINT on people. I've just met and found their YouTube channels and decided whether or not they were cool based on videos they've made. <laughs> um, so definitely. And people post comments and you can track them. But Reddit was what I was getting at. Reddit is an excellent resource. Um, if you go into my Reddit history or one of my Reddit histories, you'll find me interacting with people from cat pictures to telling some guy who claimed he bought a bunch of drugs that he stole a picture off of a drug website and linked it and he got called out <laughs> and that was really fun. I don't even know if that post is up there anymore. Um, Reddit is really great because not only can you track someone across their Reddit history and not, you can literally see someone develop on Reddit. If you have ever, uh, if somebody has been on Reddit for a long time especially in Reddit time, because Reddit's gone through so many iterations. And you can go back in their history, four plus years. You can actually see the development of a person in what they do on Reddit. It's fascinating. I have things I want to do. Um, you can hide, you can hide your history. You can go and delete things, but most people don't know those settings. Most people leave everything open. <laughs> Um, and some people who have privatized it, I think you can still get access to it if you can like hang out with them. Yeah, those, those did work. They didn't work last time I was playing with those. You also can get the API to scrape it and then you can pull most anything. Um, so I'm sorry to anybody who's not looking at chat. I was just responding to chat and not <laughs> explaining myself. Um, we were talking about credit and remove it. Um, I think said it is still up and remove it isn't. I don't know how to pronounce them. I have a question for you, yes. actually. I have um, an answer, maybe. <laughs> oh, um, the so I've seen like the Grease Monkey um strips where they like overwrite all the comments. Um, do because I was actually thinking of using it myself, quite frankly. Do we have the same bottle, maybe. Are we bottle twins? We're bottle twins. <laughs> um, I was actually thinking about using it myself for all like seven years of Reddit history. Don't go oh sent me right now. You cannot find it anyway. <laughs> Challenge you. Find mine. <laughs> There's the same name everywhere. For my fake no, one. No, I, I <laughs> need to I need to be quiet right now. <laughs> um just letting everybody so, know. Someone's gonna watch this on Google and be like, I wanna look at yours and see who you've developed as a friend. Go, please. <laughs> so would those scripts um uh, is that the last thing that um that like a scraper is going to pick up or will it still um like how effective are those yeah, depends on the scraper question. um and this may have changed i haven't written a reddit scraper since last year and mm -hmm. sometimes the api changes you can write a scraper that just hops around um, and follows links. And then mm. that's historical data that's not going to change, but that can get messy. You can also get access to the Reddit API, which is not difficult. I saw something moving behind me and got really confused and it was my dog. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> um, and it is, so it's not, how do I want to say this? The API lets you see way more and it's generally really easy to get access to. You get to see upvotes, all of them, all downvotes, all threads, and you can keep them in line. Um, so that one's more fun. Um, I will go down this rabbit hole because I love making spiders. <laughs> the TR is yeah. fun. So um, my suggestion would be to DM me on like Twitter or something, and then we'll we can definitely talk about that more, and I'll share any resources. Cool. Um, but I won't stop talking about things I can nerd out on, so we should probably stop. I hope that slightly answered your question enough to talk about it more later. But, um, I wanted to go back to Eric's thing. You have to edit all your comments before you delete your account or else the comments will stay there on Reddit. Yes, excellent point. Love that. Love when people just disappear and you still see all of their comments. Excellent. Um, and Diego, you brought up sock puppets. Love sock puppets. Sock puppets are excellent. I have sock puppet Reddit accounts, which is why I don't care if you look at my Reddit account. <laughs> um, sock puppet Facebooks, Twitters. Oh, I've got them on the dark net, deep net, and clear web or clear net. If I was would be invited, I would adore to do so, Mike. Um, and well, well, I know the organizers on here. Maybe we could talk to Inessa about that. <laughs> <laughs> But we can uh, we can do that on a side channel. Sure, I'm happy to talk about that at any point. Uh, I people kept messaging or messaging uh, mentioning machine learning, and I'm all about that. So by all means, please talk to me. But um, back to this. I love API abuse, Mike, because you brought up the Google Docs one. APIs are fun. You learn how to mess it. Men uh, Yay. If you learn how to mess with APIs, you can do so much. The Twitter API, they've locked that one down. They're trying real hard, but yet they let you make a bot and just let it go. <laughs> priorities. <laughs> we have priorities here. <laughs> um, we've gotten off track, which is not uncommon with me, so it's fine. So we have... Um, so the one I was fishing for was Reddit because there's so much out there. And personally, when I do an investigation on somebody, I want to try to link that person across accounts. And having their name on Facebook is great, but when someone has a username on Reddit, they tend to carry it to Twitter and sometimes they actually link them. And then you'll find them on Discord and then you'll find them in who knows where Timbuktu of the internet, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, so I love starting at that level. Spotify is fun. That's an interesting one. I do like that one because what somebody names their songs, their like playlists can be really interesting. I've seen weird ones. It's good. Um, yeah, but you can definitely use any of the items that have been mentioned in these in the chat here or off of mute you can use any of them for OSINT and you can use them for almost any type of OSINT you want to do you want to do some OSINT to see who might be attacking your industry or your company you can use pretty much any of the social media for that why because if you have a big name company like FireEye who's going to talk about something like solar winds you're going to see that on Twitter on LinkedIn You'll probably see it on Facebook if you're in the right groups. You'll definitely see on Reddit. <laughs> um, you'll see it pretty much anywhere. Spotify, maybe not. YouTube, yes. Um, Club Penguin, I'm not sure, but we can always dig into that and let you know later. Um, but you can use any of these tools. You want to find out who has, I don't know, um, who has the best ice cream recipe? You can probably find that on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. You'll find a bunch of different ones at least. So you can dig into all of these areas for different types of resources. That's my main point there. 
Um, and then we're going to get into cyber threat intelligence, which that's cheating for my next question. So I don't want you to look at that. So can anybody define cyber threat intelligence? Well, I take a drink because I'm losing my voice already. Cyber threat intelligence would be gathering data from the web and bringing in knowledge about your organization to create intelligence about what's going on and what might be threats to your organization. You're not wrong, but I don't want to say yes. That's, you, that's a good definition. It's not the definition I tend to go with. I don't see how, the only part of that that sounds like cyber threat intelligence is the getting it off the web part. I think maybe it's just a little too broad, um, but I don't disagree. I think that's good. Attackers and their infrastructure, that's fair. Targeted industries and tactics, yep. Um, anybody else, anyone wanna come off mute and talk or anybody else wanna pop in the chat? I muted, am I not muted? I never know, okay. <laughs> um, I think I'm more just, I think who, I think who spoke before was Tim. I don't know, it just, you lit up green. I don't zoom very much, I apologize. <laughs> um, yep, it was I the troublemaker, Tim. <gasps> troublemakers. There's so many troublemakers on this call. There's you, there's me, there's Mandy, <sighs> too many. Um, <laughs> That's fine. So I think, I think my hesitation with your definition is that I tend to just dig way deeper into the details I, rather than um, that overview, but I think that's good. I tend to go with um, this definition, which is the collection analysis of threat actors, motives, targets, and attack behaviors in the realm of cybersecurity specifically. Um, often- uh, I, I'm so glad you have the word analysis in there. Because everyone who sells threat feeds, in my opinion, needs a punch in the face because it's threat data. Because until you combine that with other information, it's not intelligence. Correct. Which I think is was part of my hesitation with your uh, original overview is I hear a lot of people talking about data and calling it intelligence. And this is a whole nother spiel we could go on. For a minute, we will because it's important to understand what I do. Um, but most things people have is, is data. All of the OSINT we just talked about is data. You've got to take all of this resource in and what you can get, especially if you have an intelligence platform, uh, what you're mostly getting is a floodgate just drowning you and your team with data and calling it intelligence, which is unfortunate because yep. you can't do anything until you actually analyze it. And, and I'm gonna have to call you out because there is an arachnid in your slides. My little spider friend? Mm -hmm. You said, don't worry, there won't be any arachnids for your arachnophobes. I did, but that's so you were it's not a real out. one. You can call Doesn't me out, matter. that's fair. That's fair. I like it, but I'm just calling you out. It's fair, that's my logo. If you follow me on anything, you're gonna see that one. Um, there's no real spiders. If you look real closely at this one, he's an onion with a little robot <laughs> piece. Um, but fair, I'm okay and open to being called out. It's okay. Uh, but yes, analysis is very important. Um, and the way you analyze the data you're collecting, it depends on the audience who is going to be ingesting it which I tend to look at at three very high levels of tactical, operational, and strategic. Tactical being your analysts, your IR response team, operational being your management team, your engineers, depending on what your titles are, where you are. And then strategic being the higher up people. And each level needs a different layer of technical background, depending on what this is. Wait, I'm just reading the, the chat, sorry. Um, gathering data on threats from internet and social engineering as well 
is actual intelligence data can be actionable. So the whole point of intelligence is that it can be actionable. By the time that you've analyzed it down from data to intelligence, you should have something you can act upon. Be that put in mitigations, be preemptive, hand something over to police. The intelligence life cycle, which is often you'll see it defined by the CIA or some other government function. Yes, you need to, the context and everything. You have all this data, you need to see what puzzle pieces fit together and what that gets you to. And you may be right, you may be wrong. It kind of depends on what data you get to. If you've got these floodgates, you're not gonna be able to analyze all of it. It's almost impossible. That's why we have some people who utilizes, utilize automation. And the issue we have there is you, you have to train the automation to do it right or, or create it to do it right. And you can still probably missing stuff. Um, I'm actually reading the book right now called AI for Lawyers. And it's talking about this specifically this one uh, software called Kira and how lawyers can utilize it, shiny, <laughs> uh, that lawyers can utilize it to go over documents that like, let's say during an acquisition, they otherwise wouldn't be able to look at it at all because they just don't have the time or the budget. And whether or not that's good, bad, et cetera, because they're using automation to go through these things. It's the same kind of with this kind of data, it's all data. You need to go through it and turn it into something else. You need to clean it. You need to get a rock and you got to polish it into a, a shiny little stone. Um, and then you can actually use it and it should be actionable. And companies that do focus on this and most of them to your point, Tim, are giving you data, not intelligence, unless you have actually hired them to give you an intelligence report. Uh, <laughs> Um, but the, you'll see recorded future, flashpoint, crowd strike, fire eye slash mandiant sands. Uh, I was hoping somebody would say that, Jay. Because <laughs> when I read the book, that's what I thought of at first. Uh, and I don't think that the chat's going to be in the video. I don't know how that works. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm just going to read your comment, which is Kira question mark, a death note reference. And I don't think it was, but I say yes. <laughs> um, does anybody want to bring up anything else about threat intelligence? Because that was fun. I enjoyed that back and forth and being called out for my spider. I say the silence as no. We shall move on. So uh, does anybody have their favorite OSINT CTI tool? Ooh. Eye skin. <laughs> Anything else? Brain is big brain thoughts right there. Anybody else? Tools. <laughs> Mike, if you're not using Notepad plus plus, you're doing it wrong. Notepad plus plus and Joplin. I personally prefer Sublime, but you do you. Let's see. Uh, so I have listed just a few that I've used. Shodan is a good one. Maltigo, Spiderfoot, Malshare, OSINT Framework, Sublime. Yes. Uh, Google Dorks, please. <laughs> have I been pwned? Fun one. Check username. Been verified. Creepy. Sounds creepy. It is creepy. It's just going to haunt you across social media is really what it does. Uh, Recon, The Harvester, Nmap all these fun things. There's so many. And then there's open source tools, like the thing that I'm working on. Um, and they're just, there's so much out there, which is also a big problem as well as a great thing, because that means two people working on the same data might actually be interacting with different stuff because of the different types of tools they're using. It's very important to think about because if you have a team of people doing this, you're going to want some of them who are magic in this one area versus others who are magic in a different area to focus on their lanes. And then we can actually start bringing them forward and melding the data that they're going through together when we go into the intelligence analysis phase. It's pretty cool stuff. 
All right, we got here, guys. We did it. We got to my least favorite picture on the internet. I hate. <laughs> I hate so much. This is nothing against Cyware, which is the company that had this particular graphic. I hate the igloo. <laughs> iceberg, that's it. Thank you. I hate the iceberg. I said igloo. I'm wrong. I'm always wrong. It's fine. I hate it <laughs> so much, guys. I could rant about just hating this iceberg. So that aside, we're going to talk about the layers of the internet at a very, so please don't believe this infographic or other ones that use a similar format. They are wrong, <laughs> or at least they're not explaining themselves very well. Uh, kind of like stats. You can make stats say whatever you want. It's the same story here. Uh, so I'm going to be talking at a very high level. Some people may want to be more specific with certain things. I just want to talk at a high level so we have a level playing field. So that means we're going to talk about the clear web. <laughs> we're going to talk about the clear web, the deep web, and the dark net. And when we get to the dark net, we will mention briefly different dark webs, which is how I define them and how I went over them when I had my class. So before we move on from this slide, can anybody name me a clear net website? Clubhouse. <laughs> Keep it with a <the> theme. <laughs> no, actually. Fine. I don't we'll get to Clubhouse, but no. And yes, I like the quote, Shane. Fine, we'll go with Reddit then. Yes, most, mostly Reddit, I would say like 95 to 98% of Reddit is clear net. Definitely fair. Anybody else? And please, if you want to hop off of, of mute, come chat. There's so many. Yeah, people. come on, people. This is my first time here and I'm already causing trouble. Unmute. Which Join is what in. I want, really. I just like trouble, so. You don't want me to unmute. Well, you'll I love Tim then, because care. Tim is, uh, you know. Hey, if Shane didn't he, he want really you, you in trouble. All right, I'll, I'll go with uh, my ClearNet uh, website, Wikipedia. Yeah, Wikipedia is a great one. And pretty much holistically is ClearNet. So yeah, that's a good example. Um, anybody else? One more. Let's take the onion talk. I thought Wikipedia had a, a dot on the address. Uh, it does, but Wikipedia itself is a clear net website. Just because something has, so this is a good point. Just because something mm. has a dark net URL, that URL specifically is part of the dark net. In this case, Tor, which is the Tor dark web, but not necessarily indicative of the whole website. Facebook, which also has a Tor link, which I don't know how that passes <laughs> their terms of service. <laughs> well, they're doing it to provide content for people who can't get to it in other countries. Yes, but it also can break their terms of service or make it very unsafe for people in like America in like a general stance because their terms of service is that you're supposed to log in as yourself, which let's be real, plenty of people don't. But that's what you're supposed to be a real person when you log into Facebook. You're supposed to be yourself. At one point, they, I don't know if they're still doing it, but they were like, send us a picture of your license so we can verify you're a person if they were suspicious of you. Mm. And then they want you to go on to a tour session and log in as your actual person when you are probably, and it depends on which version of tour we're talking about because there has been some updates. Yeah, it which when you could move from Facebook and then in the next little tab, go and buy 7,000 kilos or something that you shouldn't. <laughs> and if you buy 7,000, honestly, there's a whole other question I have for you, but you could buy that. And then that instance is fingerprinted alongside with the Facebook and now those are tied together. And if somebody is already monitoring your activity, they now have a direct link to your actual actual account that would trace you back to the clearnet. 
or you log on to Facebook on a false account where it's not actually you and you're breaking the terms of service. So I understand that point that they're trying to give Facebook to places where it wouldn't have Facebook or that wouldn't be access or you could get in trouble for that. I totally get that. But it still blows my mind. <laughs> the, there's some cognitive dissonance going on with Facebook and Tor. <laughs> That is just very interesting to me. Um, but yes, that's, that is a good point. Um, and thank you. I think, J.E., you brought up the Wikipedia link. That's also a good point. I would. They might have those links, but they're not necessarily inherently dark net, right? The, the majority of them are clear net. Uh, anybody have any? I have so many rabbit holes, Heather. <laughs> um that's fair also eric so I'm i so <laughs> this, is, this is all me this is just how this goes this is why i like interactive ones because i don't want to just read slides to you that's not fun i want us to talk about stuff and learn things you guys know stuff i don't know if you bring it up that's gonna be super cool i like it um all right give me some deep web websites let's go Deep web websites. And who's going to say that on a recorded call? Come on. Man. <laughs> Deep web websites. <laughs> Deep web. Oh, we might have different definitions then because we've already named some. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. And yeah, now I don't know if I should say this one out loud because I don't want it to go away. There's a certain. Uh, tool that you can only access on for where you can plug in a password and get emails from it so but that wouldn't be on tour yeah you can uh hold that we're not talking about the same thing um you're still in what did you say i, I keep mixing web. them up too deep web right it's, so that's, and that's fine that's kind of that was kind of the point of asking this at this point mm -hmm. is to see where the definitions get muddled because mm -hmm. i've seen deep web and dark web interchanged which is why i have mm -hmm. this whole point um so <laughs> i don't josh i like that glitter is a fun one um so that site you're bringing up heather if it's that one if i know which one you're talking about which i think i do been there a few times should be dark net only so we'll talk about that again in a second google drive you're logging into your google drive yes uh password protected files on a server maybe we'll talk about why in, but generally yes but maybe one time secret i don't trust your link eric um your personal blog can anybody read it do you use seo at all rj45 Nope. Then sure, probably, maybe. Um, ILFS 2021 conference website is probably, maybe if it's locked down. Uh, uh, that, that had better be public. That had better be open. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that meant the web page saying, hey, we're really cool, or the website, <laughs> thanks, Mandy, or the website that has like, come to this to do this thing. I wasn't sure which one we were talking about. That, yeah, that should be clear net then. Um, hack the box. <laughs> hack the box is clear net. Um, the individual boxes you're working on are deep web, but the website itself is clear. Mm. Um, and that also depends on the box. Some of them aren't, I think. I don't know if those are still all up there. I'm seeing lots of links and I'm suspicious of all of you. <laughs> watching i'm watching you guys um ashley madison <laughs> oh man ah oh, that's a good one that is that is uh, that's public now yeah, well, the dad, public. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> i think there's an app on your weather. phone now might have been dark weather once maybe i think it was definitely it was it was mostly deep web so i oh. what i'm seeing here WikiLeaks is clear that's fair there's a, mostly i'd consider that clear net um there's a there's a confusion of definitions here pastebin is definitely clear net um which is which is good because we're going to get to that in a second before we get to that 
What's everybody's favorite Darknet website? I'll tell you mine. I'll show you mine. I'm, look, all right, guys, trust. We got it. We got to be trusting of each other, guys. Um, even though I just said I'm suspicious of all of you. Yeah, say, why don't you click on any of those links then? Because I'm suspicious of all of you. Look, uh, <laughs> my favorite. She trusts, but she's smart. She's gonna fire those up in a VM later. Yeah, <laughs> I have too many of those. This is from my favorite darknet website, which is Dread. My favorite used to be Torum, but uh, it's gone now. <laughs> So at least the original Torum is. So my other one is Dread. And Dread is a masterpiece to behold. Okay. I love Dread. And I'm probably, I keep talking about their captures and they keep changing them. And I don't think it has any association with me, but I'm not going to stop talking about them because they're masterpieces. They, <laughs> I wish I had, it's on a different computer. I have captions, like screenshots of their old captures which were like these art deco blobs of arts and lines and squiggles and squirrels and all this stuff. And then these shapes and some of them were colored in and some weren't and you had to figure out which ones were or weren't. And that was the captcha. And it was impossible. <laughs> it didn't last very long. It was so hard. And then they moved to this one, which is they have a constellation of some shape and it moves around. So it's supposed to stop the like machine learning, which I still don't think it's that difficult to do. And then I haven't written the capture breaker for this. I have written capture breakers. And then you find it from the list. Um, they're beautiful. They're magical. It's my favorite website, if for nothing else than this. And then I also go on there and I just mess with people and I like watching them diss on people uh, and love social engineering, but hate social engineers. It's really good. It's really fun. So there, I shared mine. Anybody else sharing theirs? When you have more VMs and browser tabs, listen, don't call me out like that, Mike. It's rude. It's rude. All right, you guys should see the slide again. I have to reopen my chat. I love Dread. <laughs> That's fair. Anybody else have a favorite one? I, they're probably not paying any attention to this, so you can say it, I promise. Or put it in the chat if you <laughs> want to say it. Yeah, a lot of them go down for once at a time. Silk Road was a favorite. All right. Uh, I'm sorry to say it's not hanging out very much right now, but you know. <laughs> um, <they're laughs> Eric, I like that response. Um, there's a lot of good ones. There's... Sure. Oh, fun. Um, all right, so before we move on, what does anybody have a website on any dark net, on any dark web part of the dark net that they would see as not malicious? See Mandy be like, uh-huh, yes, <laughs> but not, not saying nothing. Is that copyrighted? I can't sing that song, never mind. Hmm. We're gonna put it on YouTube. We can't get a copyright strike because I hummed the Jeopardy song. Duck Duck Go is, is clear net, <laughs> but that's fair. Great. So you shut down Swiffle Sex YouTube channel. Thanks. I would just get demonetized. <laughs> yeah, you would get demonetized. Revenue. Just yeah. demonetized, yeah. Well, demonetized is where you don't get ad revenue. The, yeah. uh, the, the person who owns the rights to it can also claim your video, in which case the ad revenue just goes. To <laughs> yeah, we, we don't do any revenue generation on our channel, so I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, you see, if you want to break the revenue generation, you just have to mention something that Jeopardy would not like. In the app, in, in the thing. So if they claimed yeah. it, then they'd be promoting and getting money. From you know, that's fair. That's fair. And JE, uh, and last I checked, they don't actually index the dark web. Most browsers that claim to index the dark web don't, or they don't do it entirely. Almost none of them do it even to a third. But um, DuckDuckDo works on the dark net. 
but if you go to it, it's usually redirects to its clear net link. Um, just because you're on something like the Tor browser doesn't mean you're actually on the dark net. And dark duck oh, primarily only works on Tor over the other ones. It does have a dark mode. Generally speaking though, it's, it's not really indexing as much unless that has changed recently. Cause last I was looking at it, it was still given a bunch of clear links. It does give you some of the wikis and the hubs. Uh, it may have changed, I don't know, I, don't know. I can be wrong. Um, but usually, yeah, that's fair. Uh, it does, it does pop up. I don't, I've never seen DuckDuckGo in not dark mode. I set everything to dark mode. My browser is just set to tell everything to no. We don't do light here. I'm pale. Look, guys, look, look. I'm a ghost. We can't have light mode. <laughs> okay. Um, that's fair, Jay. That's totally fair. But yeah, I, um, DuckDuckGo, if you go on Tor, it is now the default web browser, I believe. This is, I don't lose phasmophobia because I am a ghost. I just hang out with the ghost cat, Mike, until Mandy finds it. <laughs> Mandy, I saw that look. Oh my God. Oh, the ghost cat is the bane of our existence. Um, no, if you don't watch the ILF Twitch streams, you will not get the fun ghost cat unless you play the game and have found it, in which case, please tell Mandy and I how to find it. Um, anyway. That's totally fair. So yeah, DuckDuckGo doesn't actually index the darknet. Um, and again, this is specifically Tor that we're referencing right now, which is one of the dark webs of the darknet. Uh, it gets a little convoluted and annoying. I, I get it. Um, but there are a few that were designed for Tor. They're just not great. Uh, you have Not Evil. Tor is a dark web. Dark webs are part of the dark net. Oh. So that's why I'm saying it's, it's a little convoluted. It's annoying. Those terms get used interchangeably. I, I've i gotten, look, I'm going to be honest. I've gotten into arguments with threat and tell people who are like, I have dark web data, big bad dark <laughs> web data. And I'm like, show me. And they're like, no. <laughs> I've gotten into arguments with people over this. Uh, so they, they switch it all the time. Um, well, they obviously don't have it or they'd be marketing this dark web in telpies. But they do market it as that and then they just don't <laughs> show it to you. <laughs> and then usually, usually if they have anything, it's from Tor and it's like from the high level hub. So it's not even that great. And it's like, or it's like seven years old. So it doesn't matter anymore anyway. And they don't have anything from I2P or Freenet or any other like IRC channels or BBSs. BBS. Guys, I could, this is why I said darkness all the time. I won't stop. We've already been here over an hour. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> um, so we got on a whole side thing about DuckDuckGo. There are some for Tor. They are Ame, I think is how you pronounce it. It's Swedish? I gotta look at it, I forget. Um, <laughs> when, don't look at the slide count. We're not going through all the slides, Eric. Um, and then we have uh, Not Evil and Torch. Those are the main ones that you'll see. Ame can be accessed via the clear net to index the dark web, but it doesn't index it actively anymore, I don't think, unless they've updated it. And then you'll most likely just find weird pornography. Uh, if you want it to be monetized, you're no longer monetized on YouTube. You'll find weird pornography using not evil and torch more than almost anything else, except for something big like Torum. Generally, you just want to live off of hubs or create a cool tool like mine. Uh, so let's finally move on from this. <laughs> so. ClearNet, let's go into these details. Um, it was the ClearNet, it's indexed. That's really what it means. Um, it's usually indexed by Google is mainly the hub that we're talking about, but DuckDuckGo, Bing, Yahoo Search, I think they still have that. Um, and AOL used to have like, oh, there used to be a whole bunch of them. Yeah, that's a cool duck, isn't it? <laughs> that was my favorite sticker of DuckDuckGo. And 
basically and i've been told this is cheating but this is literally the best way to describe the clear net if you can find it on google it is clear net your bank's website is clear net your bank account is not but your bank website is you go to a university your university site is clear net you want to go find club penguin that's clear net you want to go on club penguin it's not but these are different and then we have uh, the deep web, which is your bank account. It's Discord, it's Steam, or it's your Steam account. It's your university account. It's your DEF CON forum account. Uh, if you wanna play World of Warcraft, it's that. You wanna go into Phasmophobia and have some chats on the side. Hey, that was rude, me, for switching slides. Um, <laughs> that is, this is all deep web. Um, Basically, it just means that you can, it's not indexed. The open, the front page might be indexed, but you can't go to Google and be like, I want the chat between Mandy and Sai on Discord or whatever they're using today and actively expect to have a transcript of this conversation. You can do that on Twitter if you wanna watch us banter sometimes, but you're not gonna do that on like Discord. <laughs> Um, and that's kind of the point there, right? Like Twitch is clear net because the streams, anyone can watch them and pretty much anyone can see chats, but your account and your backend, that's not as another example. So this is where I think we're having some confusion because deep web and dark web tend to be almost combined. Cause usually the phrase I hear is the deep dark web. You, anybody else heard that a lot? I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> Bothers me to no end. I hate it. Mariana Strip. Mandy, go away. <laughs> That's just goodbye. We're not, we're not playing into the internet today. Um, <laughs> you are correct, Eric. That was the joke. Um, and then we have specialized software or knowledge is required to access communications or communities for the dark net. That is, the dark net is that overall. And then you, your dark webs are free net, I2P, Tor, some IRCs, some bulletin board systems. They use their, that, that special access point. Um, but that is, those are what I mean. So we have the dark net encompasses all of this. And then the dark webs are these specific points. So hopefully that makes a little more sense based on what we were talking about a little bit ago. Please let me know if it does or does not. Telegram, good one. Telegram does not require um, the special access that you need to get for the dark net, but it would be considered a deep web tool. So just like Discord um, key pass, I think it's called. What are you called? Keybase. I always say key pass. It's keybase. Um, there are other things I have on my phones, but I don't have my phone. So yes. <laughs> uh, a lot of these wicker, a lot of these things are deep web. Um, a lot of applications can be considered deep web. Uh, because you can access them using regular internet. It's just that you can't index it. It's not like it's using necessarily a special routing or networking system. Uh, anything else? Anyway, does that clarify anything based on what we were chatting about a little earlier? I'm seeing some nods, I'm seeing some thumbs up. IRCs are generally speaking darknet. All right, so I, when does this usually end, Mike? I'm sorry, everyone. I've just taken your inter your internet, your night away. I could. I'm not going to take your internet away. That's rude. Well, you know, <laughs> we're real loose on our schedule. We we put up that our meetings go from six thirty to eight thirty, but we we typically carry on afterwards. And anybody who sticks around until everybody gets too tired right. to stick around. And I know tonight I'm I'm getting a head shake here that. Uh, I can't stick around very much longer after 8 30. Uh, I do have to oh gosh, I don't know what he's looking at. Uh, run out and pick up stuff, but <laughs> that's fine. All right. So here's what we'll do. 
Um, yeah, I'm glad every, anyone who showed up, I'm glad you did. So here's what we'll do. We'll go over this one. Maybe we'll breeze through the other ones because they're funny examples. But um, I want to stop in, let's say, 10 minutes at like 8.15. And let's do, if anybody has questions, we'll hop over that. And then we'll end for today. And by all means, I will never shut up about this. Please message me on Twitter or anywhere you stalk me and find me. <laughs> it's fine. I've had people from DEF CON add me on Discord. I really don't care. Just talk to me because I will talk about this forever. Um, so let's let's bleed, bleed, breeze, bleed. Depends on how hard you're going at it, I guess, through this. <laughs> <laughs> I mostly just laugh at Mandy's face. When I say something wrong, I just look at Mandy to see what is going on. Um, so Let's go over how long it can find to find a website to use on the clear net, deep web, and dark net. So we're, we're going to kind of go back to the scenario we brought up earlier. Um, you got a company. They have a, somebody's going to attack them. You think they're on tour. We want to figure out what's going on. All right. Look, guys, <laughs> I love stupid examples that are real life examples. So we're going to go to Google. <laughs> which I, is not my favorite search engine, but we're gonna, duck, duck, go, cool glasses, duck, favorite search engine, um, but we're gonna go to Google. We're just gonna look for tour websites. You'll go to duck, duck, go, you're gonna get kind of similar results. And then we're gonna go down a rabbit hole. And my personal favorite at the time of making these slides was best dark web websites you won't find on Google, that I found on Google. <laughs> it's my favorite, <laughs> it's my favorite. Um, and then where does that lead? And this one, I don't think I have an actual full link of it. I don't. It's actually just a link of different darknet sites with the URLs, the little um, dot onions, which, by the way, very important for anybody who actually goes on the darknet. Um, the V2 URLs, which are these short ones that you're seeing right here, if you can see it, uh, those are going to die in July. They were supposed to die in January, but if you've been following Tor, they had a few problems. So again, they're gonna die in July. <laughs> they're gonna die in July instead. And then you're gonna have these like 52 character ones. They're, they're real big. And um, I think 52 is too long. I think they're like 36 characters long. Uh, no, it's 52. These are 36. And you're going to, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that any links you have now, you get those V3 URLs because those links aren't gonna work and they're not gonna. They should no longer even redirect after that point. Um, but then they're going to send you, basically what these are going to send you to are hubs. So this, it's, it, that, a hub is a hidden wiki. You have hidden answers, which is a good site. Uh, it's not always active, but it's a good site. But to get to any of them, you just go to an Onion URL in your general browser. It's not going to work. You find some access to a, a free net site or an I2P site. It's not going to work because you need the right software for it. You need to be, have access to those actual points, those nodes or whatever the language per dark web it is. Dot onion links are not going away. The dot onion v2 links are, just to clarify that based on the chat. Uh, the v2, they're going to a different uh, way, a table set up for the links, for the, uh, the domains, for the sites. Um, it's, a, it's for better security against people who want to identify people in nodes and servers and all that stuff. Um, there's a great Tor project right up on it that's gonna go into way better detail than I'm gonna be able to give you off the top of my head. V3 is now the standard, V3 is now out. I will tell you right now, a lot of popular sites aren't using their V3 URLs yet. Um, so it is supposed to be the standard, it's just, it's not across the board yet. Um, but, they will be, they'll be back. Uh, or they will, those sites will be back once they get their V3s, I should specify. So the V3 links are still dot onions. They're just longer. The babies, longer. Um, hey, thanks, Mandy. Yeah, look, I remembered the 52 character long. I'm so proud of my brain. <laughs> anyway, um, so, once you get to the wikis, you're going to want to start going through all these things. And here are the introduction points I mentioned earlier. Ami is, or Ami, I really don't know how to pronounce it. 
is a clear net search engine for Tor hidden services. You can access it through a regular browser. It's really tiny, I know. If you want any of the ones I mentioned, let me know, I will send you the links. Um, I actually, to be honest with you, I have a very large screen and I have no idea what this looks like on your end. So, <laughs> sorry about it. Um, then you have DuckDuckGo, which is, it does, that searches the clear net, just to go back over that. Uh, you have Tor links, which is another hub. Um, I, so when I do that, it kicks me out of sharing and then it becomes a big issue. <laughs> so I will, yeah, so I will, uh, is that better? And Mandy says no, but Heather seems like yes. So I'm gonna go with Heather. Um, this one, this one's better. Full screen was not. <laughs> Uh, so we have Tor links, we have Tor Tree, we have Onion links, we have Hidden links, we have Not Evils, we have um, a whole bunch of them. Hellform is never back, it's a lie. I mean, it's sometimes back. Um, there's a bunch of cool places. One of the points I really have for this one, and again, these introduction points are where you want if you want the like um, search engine -y areas. We Fight Censorship is a big one. There's a lot of places like this. Earlier, I kind of asked if anybody had a Darknet link and I didn't mean Tor specifically, but we all tend to default to Tor because that's the one people know about the most. But um, that wasn't malicious. And I like asking this question because a lot of people know about Tor or the Darknet or the dark webs only in a malicious connotation, which I get because media talks about it in a malicious way a lot. One of the only news pieces you'll hear about for Freenet is I think a still ongoing case of somebody who had um, CSAM in Philadelphia. Uh, I2P, you barely hear anything about. You have to actually hunt and mostly you're just gonna get someone talking about the networking, not so much links. Tor, you just hear about it a lot, but it's all really bad stuff. It's Silk Road. It's the drug marketplaces, it's the weapon marketplaces, it's people going on there and sharing CSAM. It's a bunch of hackers, it's people hacking for hire, which by the way, my favorite Tor website is Rent a Hacker because he's a moron. <laughs> this man has five to seven mirrors of the same website. <laughs> and I'm not going down that rabbit hole. Anyway, <laughs> you can get an assassin. There isn't a play. So, one of my favorite places on tour, thank you, Mandy, is it's not, you don't get an assassin. What you get to do is bet Bitcoin on when someone's going to die. And, and you're not saying that you're going to do anything or you're not hiring anybody to do anything. But if it happens during your bet, you get the pot. That's it. It's just like any gamble. <laughs> Um, I, that site was not up very long. It, ch it kept changing URLs. I don't think it's up right now, but it might be. I've got a, I haven't gone to look at it in a long time. <laughs> a, a lot of websites aren't hardened. A lot of them come and go. They change URLs a lot. Um, but most of these, Tor is not about being malicious inherently. If any, did anybody listen to the podcast last week that came out? We had a challenge out. I had like two people uh, give me really great ones. So I was on the Layer 8 podcast last week. Um, we can share that link too, if you guys didn't see it. Um, I'll look for that while I'm talking. Uh, but here's the thing, guys, okay? Listen, <laughs> listen. You, I have yet to find anyone named something that wasn't blatantly just done like Mandy wanted to do and just put it on the dark net so that it wasn't on the clear net so she could win. That wasn't, that there's nothing, there has not really been anything malicious that somebody has posted um, or asked me about that I haven't been able to find on the clear net. I'm not saying it's never gonna happen. I'm just saying it hasn't happened. Thank you, Mike, I was about to post it. Um, and, 
the thing is it, you, you're right mandy it wasn't in the rules the thing is people talk about red rooms all the time if you don't know what a red room is it is supposed to be a live video feed of somebody torturing or murdering somebody if you remember or if you heard about it a few years ago i think three or four years maybe five years now i don't know the past year isn't real it's still march 2020 sometimes in my head so i don't know um some guy i think in ohio murdered someone live on facebook live and the feed wasn't taken down until at, way after the murder um i think and then he, he he murdered somebody live on facebook live that is a red room that is the clear net you don't need to go to tour for that um some you want to find people doing human trafficking stuff go to craigslist go to facebook marketplace you want to see people trading CSAM? You're going to be able to find that all over the place. Um, you're going to see that on tour, sure, but you're going to see it on the clear net. And the whole point of me saying this is that it is not inherently the fact that it's the dark net or tour or the dark web that is making people do bad things. People are doing bad things everywhere. So you shouldn't blame one section of the internet for that. You want to find hackers? Go to Twitter. <laughs> We're talking about it all the time. You want to, you want to find leaks? I, there are websites on the clear net. They're all over the place. So, yeah, thank you, Mike. I, <laughs> I always bring that one up. Look, oh, Mandy. Thank you, Mandy. Um, so, you, so I always want to bring this point up. And even if we had to stop the conversation here, this is one of the most important things I can share with people. Tor, the dark net, I2B, free net, it can be used for bad things, but it is not inherently a bad place. I have been on there since I was a preteen or younger. And I have hung out with people. I've talked to people. I, the library. I, I have been in chat rooms on there. I have been in Torchan. I have been in social medias all over the place. Yes, Mike. Yes, that was YouTube. Um, on Tor, on other free net, on free net, on all of these. I've been in all these areas and inherently I've never, not never. I definitely now do investigations where I interact with bad actors on occasion. But I have been on these in these areas and it acts the same way. People act similarly, if not the same, as they do on the clear net. 4chan is the clear net. If that is any indication of the internet, be bored. You don't need to go to the deep web or the dark net for it. Chans definitely are worse than some onion sites, and you don't, and it's clear. Yes, Forrest, I agree. I think the word dark comes into play here. And the fact that more and more people know about it, but only because of these investigations into bad actors. And when I say bad actors, I don't just mean cyber bad actors. I mean Silk Road. I mean drug trafficking. I mean human trafficking. I have been doing this stuff as a passion project, doing these investigations for a long part of my life. Like I mentioned, I'm not actually that old, but I've been doing it for a long time. My passion is making sure we understand that this is just another tool and a cog in the twisted landscape of humanity. And if we, we've got to utilize it just like we utilize other parts. So I definitely just want to iterate that if, and if nothing else. Please understand, Tor and Google have the, are very similarly dangerous. Um, yeah, hopefully that got across. I'm not gonna drill that into your brains anymore. Uh, have you heard of the Huntress from Diver Fund? Uh, vaguely. This slide makes me sad. Torum is down. <laughs> Torum had the V3 link too. Please, yeah, please tell me more. I don't, that's vaguely that sounds familiar, but I've heard the term the huntress a lot <laughs> all over the place. So that's hard. Um, yeah, 
I'm actually just gonna stop sharing now because I think that's enough of these slides. I don't think we need these anymore because yeah, it's gonna get into my machine learning stuff. Um, so it's a little past 8.15, 8, yeah, 8.15, but, um, ah, yes, I do know that. I do know her. Um, I actually am probably following her, I think. Yes, thank you for clarifying that. Are there any questions? Anybody want to chat about anything? Anyone want to hop on and tell me I'm dumb? That's fine. <laughs> Probably am. How did OSINT investigation? Uh, oh. I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention to the last half hour. Can you go back and start over again? Sure. <laughs> sure can. When you go to YouTube after it's uploaded and you go to the last 30 minutes and watch this. Uh, open source tools affect courtroom testimony. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Um, Hmm. <laughs> Depends on who's bringing it up, but uh, government officials use OSIN all the time. Um, I've talked with people who work for government agencies and they've pointed me to OSINT tools. Uh, we, there are people in the cybersecurity industry who use OSINT open source, to be specific open source <laughs> tools. And by using those, they are able to find something that their regular tools don't work. Um, open source tools are utilized by a lot of people. We don't necessarily know their backgrounds. Generally speaking, if, and it, it will depend, some courts are probably going to have a higher level or standard that they want to achieve. But if you can give a trail that someone can repeat, usually speaking, you're probably gonna be able to use that. You just have to, you, so when you, I am not a lawyer, <laughs> but when you bring up a piece of evidence generally, you have to show that it works and then the other person gets to rip it apart. Kind of like peer review. I just bring everything back to peer review because I understand that. <laughs> and you, if other people can replicate it, then yay. But I'm not a lawyer, so don't quote me. Go to, uh, what's his name? Legal Eagle, go talk to him. <laughs> he, he can probably answer that question better than I can. Ooh, question. Best practices for screenshots for documenting evidence. I have been putting good time on there. Oh my gosh. Hashing the screenshot's a good idea. I like that idea. If you're gonna turn over the evidence, I like that idea. Because um, fun fact about me, I love Stego. If you ever get an image from me and you don't check if it's got something hidden in it, you are doing something wrong because I love Stego. <laughs> I've got music that has stuff hidden in it. I worked on a project once that I want to pick up again that just makes a frequency that people can't even hear that has stuff hidden in it. I love Stego. It's one of my other favorite things. And if you send an image and I hide evidence in that image and then give you back that image, your hash is probably different. If one pixel of that image changes, that hash changes. If somebody resizes it, the hash is gonna change. So I love the idea of hashing it. I love hashes, hash everything. We wanna just know, like one of my slogans at my old job was MFA the world, still my slogan, but not my as big of a focus right now. But hash everything is also a great one because who, Tor hashes itself. When you download Tor, they're like, here's the hash. <laughs> I think it's a great idea, personally. Um, I would love to talk about documenting investigation stuff. That will take forever because it's such a great conversation. Not lying. I will I'll do a Twitch stream if enough people want me to talk about it. Otherwise, just DM me on Twitter. Uh, we can talk about it at any point. Um, everything you've listed here is great. Uh, I would say that you, depending on what level of the internet you're talking about, you'll run into some issues with like the link and stuff, but I like it a lot. Currently studying for Security Plus, trying to get into cyber. Yay. I don't have that one. So tell me how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I have no, nothing from CompTIA. I've heard America. they're great. I just have none of it. <laughs> um, CompTIA makes really great entry level certs. So if you're looking to get into it, they give you a great heads up. That's what be I've heard. Weary, so. Be weary of the company that says they want someone with a CISSP and a Security Plus with, you know, 19 years of experience because they're doing it wrong. I love, anybody see that that thing on, I know it passed LinkedIn and Twitter. 
where the guy was like, I applied for this job that, and they wanted X amount of years in this language. And so I guess I can't have it because I made the language Y years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like, love that one. Yeah, they were There's like 10 years in Kubernetes. I only wrote Kubernetes what? eight years ago. I guess I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love those. This is, oh my gosh. Um, I'm all for streams. I'm all for that stuff. Um, I love Stego. I see other men mes eh, mentions of these things. Um, Darknet course. So I did a Darknet course. It was supposed to be three levels. We only did one. Um, I was unable to continue it in 2020. I am, I would love to pick it up again this year. I don't know that I'm going to because I'm thinking I want to write a manual first um, or like mini books first. Um, so it might not come back till 2022. We will see, but if you want to hear out, hear out what words come out of my mouth ever, um, if you want to hear more, I speak good words, I swear. Please just everybody go follow me on Twitter. Um, I don't Twitter, I don't social media unless I'm investigating, but if you want to be confused and then often hear about the dark net, follow my Twitter account. Tur ugh. Words are so hard. Um, any OSINT sources to cross-reference phone numbers to see if they are scammers using VoIP for... I like this one. Where's the pre-order for the books? I don't have a publisher. I'm just writing things, man. I would love to write. I brought it upstairs. Where did I put it? All right, guys, don't leave. Hang on. I'm shutting off my camera for one second. Wait. Quick, everyone run. <laughs> We can just like, like kill the feed now and. <laughs> uh, put her in the waiting room. I hope you heard. Her in the waiting room. Hope you heard me tell my dog to stop breaking my house. No, it won't work. Now she's here. I hope they reach out to me. I hate this book so much, guys. <laughs> this book is called Dark Web Cyber Threat Intelligence Mining. I hate this book. This is a bad book. And if they could publish it, maybe I can someday. <laughs> also, I, I've written so many things that are wrong in this book. I don't like this book. I brought this as a prime example. This is a very biased book. This book looks at the dark net as only evil people go there. Only bad people are on tour. Go buy it. Do it. Do these yellows? Are you talking about these? Um, also yellow. What? I don't know what the yellow lenses yelling thing is about. You guys have to explain. Oh, are you talking about my glasses? Oh, I can't see light. <laughs> so I have shaded glasses. They do not tint. You will see me with different levels of darkness in front of my eyes. This is not a secret. I can't see light. The fact that the light is on is for you, not me. <laughs> all of my screens are tinted. All of my life is tinted. I can't, I can't process light in my eyeballs. Um, so uh, these, I highly recommend. If you want to read it, by all means, read it. You might disagree with me. Um, I would totally do it. If, if no starch was open to it, I'd do it. So they are never heard of stops. <laughs> Um, yes, I'm, I'm totally for it. Anyway, my rant about this book really quick. This book is from a bunch of, I think PhD students. I think they're all PhD students or PhD <laughs> and master's students who went on tour and looked at it as only a place of evil. And you can see this inherently in how they, they talk about it. And I don't know if I have my favorite quotes off the top of my head right now, but some of them are just like, um, here's one. This one's funny. The self-identification of a hacker, whether malicious or not, is the only time they say or not, by the way, in this whole book so far, is strongly reflected and transmitted through the use of specific jargon, aka leet speak. It's definitely an academics book, but it's from a it's from a everyone is evil point of view. And 
the reason I have such an issue with it is that one, I want everyone to understand that Tor is not evil inherently. And two, I was in a darknet investigation class. If I've mentioned my background in the past, I think it is in my DEF CON talk. I, my original background was forensic science. I was gonna be a forensic pathologist, gonna hang out with dead people. It's not that surprising once you get to know me. And then <laughs> I went into national security with a focus on cybersecurity. And I helped some of the classes at the university I was at at the time. And one of the classes I was in was darknet investigations with an actual person in law enforcement who is doing these investigations. And I was the only other person who understood the darknet at the time in the class. And so I've taught, I've, I helped with that class. I helped show different websites. I helped show different techniques. And I fought with people every day to the point that I had some, the professor pinging me on the side being like, don't verbally murder people in my class, please. Because Somebody literally said, you only go on the dark net if you're a bad person. And I asked her, you're on the dark net to say that. What does that mean? Are you, what are you confessing to? Let me know. <laughs> Let's talk about it. <laughs> um, it just bothers me a lot. So um, it's a bad book. If you want the title of it, I'll send it to you. By all means, read it. If you love it, we can debate about it. I like it. Let's go. I always like people who have different opinions from mine. Um, uh, our, I like the love of my glasses in the chat. <laughs> um, these are blue light protection. When I say I can't see light, I mean light. <laughs> like light. Um, my eyes can't process light correctly. If it's too bright, I can't see. I basically just have no vision. Um, so these are, they do have blue light protection, but they also, they don't transition, but they, um, they are, these ones are, are black. And then I have, um, and then I have, I have ones that are green. I have all different colors. I have one that's rose gold. That one's fun. If you write with an orange pen and you have rose gold, gold glasses, the pen, the ink disappears. Fun fact of the evening among many, I hope, but if not, you have one that so there's that. Uh, any other questions sure. net related hey thank you mandy anybody else anything else you guys want to chat about before i i leave that's a fun fact mandy i don't know how that's fun i like that that's cool anything else anybody else I guess not. Nobody's talking. Um, that's fine. So, um, just as oh no, you brought up VPNs. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to use it for? <laughs> that's the answer to VPNs. What do you want to use it for? You want to use it to get on darknet? No, <laughs> we, we can talk about it. Everyone's leaving. We're gonna talk about it later. Um, why are they so anti VPN? That is an excellent question, and it's 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 a complicated conversation. Um, short answer is: if you don't implement a VPN properly, you can leak data about yourself. I mean, that's also fair. VPNs are trash. Some of them. That's true. I like all of two of them. <laughs> um, Which two? One of them is Cyber Ghost. If you want to use that one, I like that one. Um, I use that in general. Uh, but not using a VPN is crazy. Why? Well, you got to hide. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. That's, hmm. I hate that question. People are like, why? Privacy are you is good. Yeah, it's, it's more about how you layer things than anything else. If you're just going to be on the clear net and the deep web, use a VPN. If you want to be able to play video games with your friend and you want to be on a VPN, good luck. <laughs> good luck. But do it. Um, but my ISP will know I spend 20 hours a day playing WoW. <laughs> Look, you know, that, that's not good. That, they'll know that. Hey, man, they just want to watch everything you're doing. Can and then sell it to Google. Experience? Yeah. 
<laughs> I don't want cookies. I don't want ad tracking. Don't give me. Oh, the cookies are going, but they'll get you with something else. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, I so I. I don't want to say I don't want to have this conversation. I just want to keep you here all night. I'd love to talk about this. Um, and I have resources on this I can send to anybody who's interesting. I'm going, I'm going to direct you to Twitter again. Um, and by the way, my, my DMs on Twitter are open. Uh, I just don't automatically see them. So if I don't get back to you, if anybody messages me uh, in like a day, it's because it doesn't always notify me that they're in my accept inbox, but I will get back to you. Um, <laughs> Mike. Uh, so by all means you're welcome to follow me you're welcome to not follow me you're welcome to message me you're welcome to, to tell me I'm dumb I don't whatever eat your own guys it's the internet I'm used to it <laughs> so uh, I hang out on the chans and on reddit I know what people think when no one's looking um, hopefully this was fun Oh, okay. Look, now that's fun. Tails is fun. Tails is plug and play. Basically, nothing stays on your computer. Not necessarily true. That if you want to get into a more technical side, it's not necessarily true. But I'm gonna say this really fast. So slow down the YouTube video when you get to this point. All right. Tails is plug and play. You plug it in. You go on tour. You do whatever you want to do on tour, and then you unplug it, and then you destroy the USB, so nobody ever sees what you did ever in your entire life. I was gonna say something, but it will totally demonetize and mess up this video on YouTube. So I'm not gonna say anything. Never mind. Um, that's why people like it. If you don't want to download Tor or you don't trust Tor on your base system, you can plug and play. That's why Tails is so like utilized. Hoonix, I like if you're doing investigation, yeah, yeah. a few things that you can add to that that can help you out. Get out of there. Is way too big of another level of a conversation for us to have. So, um, I will definitely send you anything if you want to know more about it. I can definitely talk to you about it, but we're going to have to talk about that another time. That takes a long time to even understand how to download the darn thing. It's basically your own server. Um, I know some people have left. That should be a book subject. Oh, Lord. There's so many things I could talk. I'm mm, so many things. The, the title of this was not a lie, guys. <laughs> I'll do it forever. I won't stop. I'm trying to learn how to stop. I love Mandy's face because Mandy is the mirror to the soul. When I do something dumb, just look at Mandy. <laughs> She's just honest. Um, so I hope this was interesting. I hope you learned something. I hope everybody had fun. And if you didn't, let me know so I can fix it next time <laughs> if I ever get to talk in front of people again. Um, thanks guys. I'm going to post my Twitter one more time, just because there were so many great questions that we did not go over. And I want to talk to you guys about it and I want to never shut up about the dark net. So one last time, I would love to get a book out for real. So hopefully that comes one day. Oh, I posted it privately wrong. Hang on to everybody. That's where I want. Ta-da. There's my link. Um, yeah, please, please interact with me. Please reach out to me at any point. Thank you guys all for coming. I hope it was, like I said, I hope it was fun. I hope it was interesting. Reach out to me on Twitter. I'm Leviton and everywhere. Go find me wherever you want to find me, I guess. Um, and if you have questions, you want resources, you want more information about anything, let me know. I'm happy to share this stuff. If you want to know where to get a Russian submarine, though, just go to Layer 8 Podcasts. They, I already answered that question. <laughs> And then somebody found the actual sandwich, which was a way better find than the actual stupid submarine I found. So whatever. All right, guys. Calling it quits. Bye. Bye. Remember, Thank if you, you found anything to be interesting, you have to go donate to the ILF. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm telling you what to do, Mandy. Bye, guys.